Greetings friends. Um, I want to go over how we do square roots in the calculator. Um, so the first thing you want to do is go ahead and clear everything out, get to your main screen. Um, the first thing I want to point your attention to is you see right above your squared button, there's a square root button there. And that's where you're going to do your simple square roots. So the first problem I have over here is the square root of 25. How I get the square root is you see this is in blue, so I need to hit the second button, and then I hit the squared to get the square root. What goes underneath my square root is 25. Um, I'm going to practice. It's good to get in a habit of closing your parentheses, and I'll show you why here soon. Um, we're going to do the square root of 25. Hit enter, so we know the square root of 25 is 5. So I'm going to update that here is equal to 5. And we know this is because um, 5 squared is equal to 25. In the last video, I kind of explained the relationship between square roots and squares and why the square root of 25 is 5. Now let's try negative 25. So I'm going to hit square root of, and then I'm going to put negative 25 in there, and then I'm going to close my parentheses, and when I hit enter, it says error, non-real answer. And that's exactly what we talked about in the last video. There's not a number I can square and get a negative out, because a negative times a negative is equal to a positive. Um, so we can't square a number. So I'm just going to go ahead and say quit. Um, so for this one, we're going to put equals um, not a real number. Um, how about cubed roots? I look over here. I don't see a cubed root over here. So if I'm going to do the cubed root of one. Um, 25. A place I can see a lot of the things that um, will help me that I don't see on my second button is going to be to go ahead and hit the math. And you see right here I've got a cubed root button that's right down there at number 4. So I'm going to scroll down to number 4 and hit enter. And that gives me my cubed root. And now I'm going to put my number 125 in there and hit enter. And we see that the cubed root of 125 is equal to 5. And that's because 5 raised to the third power is equal to 125. All right. Well, I see a dreaded negative under my root, but um, I don't know if that's going to change my answer. Remember in the last video we talked about odd roots can have negative numbers. So since this is a fifth root, it's kind of small. Let me make this a little bit bigger so you can see that this is a fifth root. There we go. Um, how do I get a fifth root? Well, when I hit my math button, you see there isn't any fifth root in here. So this is where we're going to use this x root button. So what we need to do is I'm going to go ahead and clear everything out and clear my key history so you can follow around. If you're going to do something above cubed root, what you want to do here is you want to put the number root in front. So let's hit 5. And now we're going to go select that x root. So we hit math. And we're going to go down to the x root and hit enter. So this is how we represent fifth root. And now what is in our fifth root is negative 32. So I close my parentheses. The fifth root of negative 32 is equal to negative 2. So let me get out of my square root. The fifth root of negative 32 is equal to negative 2. And that is because. If I take, we got to put it in parentheses, negative 2, um, and I raise that to the fifth power, that is going to be equal to negative 32. All right. Um, let me do another one of these higher power roots. All right, so I made up another one. Let's look at the fourth root of 625. Again, we need a root higher than cubed. So we need to go ahead and put the number of the root first. So we're doing a fourth root. And then I'm going to hit my math button, and I'm going to go down to just my general square root key. That's this fifth one right here. Um, so it's going to be the fourth root of 625, and hit Enter, and that gives me 5. So the fourth root of 625 is equal to 5. And again, that's because um, 5 raised to the fourth power is equal to 625. Okay, I had to change this one up a little bit. Um, let's look at the square root of 16 over 81. So I'm going to do square root of 16. Remember how we write fractions? We use the division bar over 81. And I close my parentheses. And I hit Enter. 
gives me this long decimal. Let's try to represent it as a fraction. Um, so the square root of 16 over 81 is equal to 4 over 9. And again, that is because if I do 4 over 9 and I square it, that's going to be equal to 16 over 81. Let's do one more of these just to drive this point home. See, I got a cubed root here. Maybe you can't see that very well. Let me make this guy a little bit bigger. All right, you can see that's a cubed root of 8 over 27. So I go to my math button. Here's my cubed root down here. So I'm going to scroll down to the cubed root of, and then it's going to be 8 over 27. Close my parentheses, hit enter. Um, I see this long fraction. I'm going to turn it back into a fraction, and so I get two thirds. So I know the square root of, or the cubed root of 8 over 27 is equal to 2 over 3. And again, that is because 2 over 3 raised to the third power is equal to 8 over 27. So hopefully that cleared up how you would do some square roots and cube roots and fifth roots and higher roots in the calculator.